Hey, what's happening, guys? It's Tyler from Valve News Network, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the Japanese-only arcade version of Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Survivor. Here we go. <laughs> Now, in case you don't know, Half-Life 2 Survivor was released to Japanese arcades on June 28th, 2006, and the game itself was actually developed by Taito Corporation. Valve had licensed the availability to create a Half-Life 2 arcade version in Japan to the Japanese arcade company Taito to be able to bring the Half-Life franchise over to the Japanese gamers. The reason that Valve wanted to go ahead and do something like this is because Valve games themselves are not that popular in Asian countries. Whether it be the way that Valve itself displays the games and does not necessarily make them out to be what Japanese audiences would want them to be, the idea of Valve licensing out their own IP to Japanese arcade developers makes sense. They know what the Japanese public wants. Valve does not. Now that being said, the game itself is actually pretty weird, and when I say weird, I don't mean like the crazy Japanese weird that most Westerners think of. It's weird in the way that they actually divided up the content available in Half-Life 2. Half-Life Survivor version 2.0, the version I've been playing on, has three different game modes. Mission mode, which gives you a set number of objectives you have to complete a certain time. Battle mode, which is actually a class-based team deathmatch. And story mode, which actually is the worst part of the entire game, in my opinion. Story mode takes the levels of the original Half-Life 2 campaign and splits them up into 10 different chapters, each chapter separated into three separate sections. The chapters themselves do not actually tell the story and only really chop up the action segments of the different parts of Half-Life 2. Because this is an arcade game and they want to be able to take as many quarters as they can, they make them as short as possible, and each scene inside of each chapter is very, very short. Each scene, however, is separated with little cutscenes that are actually in-engine cutscenes that seem to be just the completion of a level. The story itself is very, very vague, and the only time that you would really get any part of the story is the very beginning when you have the opening G-Man monologue. Other than that, there is no real story. The battle mode is where the game really shines. Here you have five different classes you can play as. The Ranger, the Soldier, the Sniper, the Medic, and the Engineer. Each class has its own weapons and stats that it can use against the other team and the team with the most kills at the end of every round wins. It's fairly simplistic, but the game itself is very, very fun, and actually is like a futuristic Half-Life 2 mod. Mission mode, on the other hand, just seems kind of like a throw-in. You don't really do much of anything other than just kill a number of zombies or survive an amount of time, and it's just kind of like the worst parts of the Half-Life 2 story to begin with, so... I'm not a huge fan of mission mode. The only other thing that's really worth mentioning about this game is the controls of the original arcade. The controls for this arcade game is kind of like a hybrid joystick pedal shooter thing, and that's not really how you would think of controlling Half-Life 2. But in the original arcades, you would have to control your movement with a weird joystick paddle looking thing, and you would also have to control your aiming with a flight joystick. You would also control your speed with foot pedals. This makes the game incredibly awkward and difficult to control. So the game itself while playing with a mouse and keyboard is very, very easy because they had to compensate for the awkward controls while making the game very easy to play. Other than that, this is a pretty cool game to check out. It's really obscure and kind of weird. Uh, if you're into the weird kind of Valve weird stuff, I'm sure this is great to find out and play. Go download it, it's free, so, you know, whatever, go try it out. But overall, you know, I don't think it's that great, and it is a little upsetting how badly they chopped up the Half-Life 2 story. They probably could have done a little bit better to introduce the Japanese market to the Half-Life 2 game franchise. But anyways, that was your review of Half-Life 2 Survivor. As you know, I'm Tyler McVicker. Please like, favorite, subscribe, comment, share, do all that stuff. I love Valve. Valve is my life. I'm Tyler McVicker. This is Valve News Network. Adios.